Hello everyone. Welcome to the daily current affair analysis from Veranda IAS. Today we are going to see some of the important current affair topic from the day of 5th of June 2023. Moving on to the topics of the day. The first topic will be understanding the covered system which will be definitely an editorial analysis which can be mapped to GS3 science and technology development and applications. The second topic will be what is OPEC plus which can be mapped GS2, regional groupings and international organizations. As well, moving on to the third topic, it will be Dudwa Tiger Reserve GS3 environment. So we'll be also giving timestamps and those who haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe for more important information and news about the daily current affair and also its analysis. Moving on to the first topic of the day, understanding the coverage system. So let us first understand about the context of this. Uh, article or editorial so we can see in the recent uh, uh, train accident which happened in odisha so the in that the railways recently confirmed that there was no covered system that is installed on the trains that is involved in the accident in the odisha's balaso district so which were the trains that were involved both the shalimar chennai coromandel express and also the yashwantpur Haura express were not fitted with the coverage TCA. So it is an indigenously developed automatic train protection system that is called as ATP system. What is that? Uh, the coverage system. Okay. So you can understand that the coverage system is an automatic train protection system or science and technological de device that we have developed. Uh, if in general or if we brief what is this coverage system, it can be briefed as a set of electronic devices and RF identification devices or the radio frequency identification devices which will be installed where all which will be installed in locomotives as well as in the signaling system as well as in the tracks then with use of these devices will be uh, they, they will actually communicate or talk with each other using ultra high ra radio frequencies and they'll be controlling the brakes of the trains and also alert drivers regarding any kind of a mischief if it is happening and all based on the logic programmed into them so it is all based on a electronics so it is a basically an electronic device which is being embedded on the railway tracks as well as uh, including the trains and let us see what is the configuration of this system so this is actually the tcas configuration what is tcas uh, the train collision avoidance system is called as tcas so this is a general system configuration so here we can see that uh, this kind of a rfid readers will be installed inside the engine trains and also these inputs or the signals from the trains will be going as a radio communication towards a central medium that is uh, uh, towards the nearest station of where the tcas control will be installed and then from there using the gps and the radio communication we can see that the next train will be also given the communication regarding any kind of a things for example a, a, a train is going to come from the just opposite side in the same track or else what happened uh, there definitely there uh, there should be some kind of information to be given to the uh, next train if one particular train coming from the opposite direction is missing out the red signal so such kind of a things so if it happens what will this thing do uh, it will automatically detect that such things did happen and will uh, put or apply automatic brakes thus avoid any kind of a collision okay is it clear now let us understand what is the significance of this system Definitely, we right now know what is the significance of the system because we have seen such kind of a disaster in front of us, right? So, first important thing is definitely the safety. So, it will prevent accidents on railway tracks like collision of trains. And also, once the system is activated within a 5 kilometer range, the, uh, the trains will have to halt to provide protection for trains on any adjacent tracks. Then, communication technology, if we, if we see, you can see that. It also includes stationary equipment to gather signal inputs and also relay them to a central system to enable seamless communication with the train. So suppose if, if the trains and the trains are communicating with respect to each other means there will be a lot of uh, issues associated. Sometimes the signals might break. There might be some kind of a, uh, like what is a, a, a pragmatic changes which will be affecting. But here there is a controlling station with which automatic system as well as if it is necessary they can also manually it uh, like they can operate it manually also right uh, now let us see about the implementation so the south central railway or the scr zone has been at the forefront of implementing the system of coverage 
So it has been deployed over 1465 kilometers in the SCL limits, covering 77 locomotives and 135 stations also, and the process is ongoing. Now let us see what is the deployment strategy or how they are planning it. So what they are doing is that the first priority will be given to high density routes and the New Delhi, Mumbai and New Delhi, Howra sections where uh, the frequency of the trains are very, very high. Then the second priority includes highly used networks followed by other passenger high density routes and finally covering all of the routes also okay in conclusion we can say that different challenges like that of closed level crossings obstructions communication issues everything have been addressed while installing the covered system but we can see that the covered system still continues to evolve and adopt to different uh, needs or the emerging vulnerabilities that is there uh, in, a, in and around us and the widespread implementation of the covered system it holds immense promise for the future of the Indian railways, right? So definitely we know that the system is not um, what is accurate. So there are a lot of flaws associated. So we are continuously trying to make the future of Indian railways much more safe and secure. So this covered system can serve as a cornerstone in achieving comprehensive safety standards and also in minimizing the accidents. So this is what the editorial actually says about. So here for UPSC, you should be clearly able to understand uh, what is the covered system or what is uh, or uh, like when we connect it with gs3 science and tech in in uh, and basically basically how uh, the uh, the configuration of the covered system does work what all kind of uh, equipments are being involved for example the radio frequency devices and the transmitters and also the control systems and all. okay so just have a basic idea and the challenges and what is the conclusion or what is the way forward or what is the scope or significance of this so with respect to means point of view this will be enough for you Moving on to the next topic. What is OPEC Plus? Let us see the context. So Saudi Arabia will soon pledge new voluntary production cuts as part of a broader OPEC Plus deal to curb their output. So this is the context. So now let us see what is this OPEC all about. So this OPEC is a group of 23 oil exporting countries which meets regularly uh, to decide how much crude oil to sell on the world market. So it is a kind of an association or it is a kind of a grouping of uh, the sellers. What kind of a sellers? Of the uh, petroleum products. So we can see that uh, these nations aim to work together on adjusting the crude oil production to bring stability to the oil market. Because all, uh, especially in the Middle Eastern countries, the major economic drive is happening through the exports of crude oil. So it is uh, necessary for them to come together and... Uh, uh, bring changes and also bring stability to their oil market. So at the core of this group are 13 members of the OPEC. What was this OPEC? The organization of the oil exporting countries that is called as OPEC. Okay, don't forget. So they, which are mainly Middle Eastern and African countries are the main members and it comprises of 13 OPEC countries plus Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Brunei, Kazakhstan, Russia, Mexico, Malaysia, South Sudan, Sudan and Oman. Okay, so please do have a research and understand which all are uh, uh, like uh, the, the 13 member countries uh, like uh, who are the who are coming under the OPEC members. Okay, make a list of the complete 13 members and also the additional members. Ah, now, what is the organization of the petroleum exporting countries or the OPEC? So we can see that it is a permanent intergovernmental organization of oil exporting countries. It is a kind of a intergovernmental organization that is all the oil exporting countries have come together and have created a mission for them what is their mission to coordinate and also to unify the petroleum policies of its member countries then also to ensure the stabilization of oil prices in the international oil markets with a view to eliminate what harmful as well as any unnecessary fluctuations which is going to affect their market means they will neutralize it because the most important thing is that all these Middle Eastern countries and African countries are very rich nowadays mainly because of their oil or the uh, petroleum export. So that should not get hampered which will have a very bad effect on their economic stability. Now, what were, how was the formation of this OPEC happened? It was established in 1960 by five founding members. Who are they? Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Currently, it has 13 members including Algeria, Angola, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Libya, Nigeria and the UAE, which is headquartered at the Vienna, Austria. Okay. Yes. Please do remember these points. Moving on to the next topic. That is Dudua Tiger Reserve. 
and why we are taking this news or what is the context. Let us see that. So, the carcass of a two-year-old tigress was recently recovered from the buffer zone of the Dudua tigress. So, this was the news because of which the Dudua tiger reserve is very, very important, especially with respect to map-based questions and also environment questions. Now, let us see about the Dudua tiger reserve. First, move on to the location. So, this is located on the Indo-Nepal border in the district Lakhimpur Kheri in Uttar Pradesh, which includes the Dudua National Park and also nearby two sanctuaries are there, which are the Kishanpur Sanctuary and Katir Niyakad Sanctuary, besides the forest areas of North Kheri, South Kheri and Shahjanpur Forest Divisions in its buffer. So, it is also geographically very important to understand the different rivers passing through each uh, uh, tiger reserve of wildlife sanctuary. So, the Sharda River is a river which flows by the Kishanpur Wildlife Sanctuary. The Girua River flows through the Katarniyakat Wildlife Sanctuary. The Suheli and the Mohana streams flow into the Dudua National Park, all of which are the tributaries of the mighty Ghagra River. Now, let us see about the vegetation. So, the vegetation is of the North Indian moist deciduous type. This is very, very important. Why I am saying that this kind of vegetation is very, very important? You might have a uh, thought in your mind that is it important? Yes, it is important because if you have seen the this year's prelims questions, uh, the, like two or three type of trees are being given and asked us to find out which all are the tropical deciduous trees. So here, it is very, very important for us to understand that let it be any national park, wildlife sanctuary, or tiger So you also have to make a list of the vegetation that is available that is whether it is tropical or whether it is deciduous whether it is any kind of a uh, short trees that is there. so such kind of uh, things is very very necessary and also it contains some of the finest examples of what sal forest which is also called scientifically shoria robesta in india okay you can google it so that you will get to, get to know uh, what is this shal forest how does it look like now let us about see about the flora associate so the flora is predominantly sal forest that is, ah, along with its associate tree species like that of Terminalia, Alata, Lagerstromia, Parviflora, Adena cordifolia, Mitragina, Parviflora, Gamelina arborea, Holoptila intrigofolia, etc. So these all are the scientific names associated. And now let us see the fauna associated with the tiger So the major mammals includes Guldar, Tiger, Fishing Cat, Monkey, Langur, Mongoose, Small Indian Mongoose and Small Indian Civet Jackal, etc. Birds include a variety of species like that of migratory and resident ones like a dabjek, spotbill pelican, large cornoran, little cormoran, grey heron, white stock, black stock, white tail, bees, etc. As well as reptiles are also there, mugger, kharial, python, sand bob, branded, great russels, viper, rat snake, etc. So, uh, many of you guys might be wondering right now, sir, how do we remember all these names associated? Should we mug up everything? So, personally, I am against this uh, act of mugging up, but rather I would suggest that do the revision. Make a proper notes. Like, okay, if you are take, uh, studying about one particular tiger reserve, Add all this kind of a pro, uh, like a, a, a details under it. For example, the environmental aspect, the flora, fauna, then uh, the geographical aspect, what are the rivers, what are the kind of a terrain that is available. Okay, so this kind of a holistic dimension or any kind of a news associated with that particular tiger. So, so such kind of a things have to be noted down separately and do the revisions periodically definitely that is going to be the ultimate thing for you to even if you go for mugging up you will not be able to remember the next year prelims okay so the revisions are the key to success moving on to the question of the day what is the term opaque plus referred to so just read out the sentences and come out with your answer yes that is correct Ah, the correct answer is option C, a coalition of countries aiming to stabilize oil prices and also regulate production. So, you should understand that ah, option C is the right answer for this question as we have already discussed. Okay, so that was for the today's topic of discussion with respect to current affairs at least. I wanted to you to have or to gain some knowledge with the daily current affair analysis that we are doing. Please do comment your suggestions and feedbacks. Unless and until we meet next time, this is Prince J signing off. Thank you.